So here we are at a simulation of the Hindenburg. One of the things that VR can do for you that we can't do in real life is bring us to places that don't exist. Let's go for a walking tour. This is the dining area, promenade, viewing windows. One of the main hallways with a bus to Paul von Hindenburg, the A deck, passenger cabins to our right and left. Let's keep going down the hallway. Another promenade and another lounge, a map of the world showing people the paths that Hindenburg's taking from Europe back to the United States. A reading room, relaxation, place to do some mail, post box. This is astounding, really. I mean, obviously the graphics could be better, but this is an indie effort. And the idea that we can visit a place that doesn't exist anymore makes it all worth it. Let's continue to some of the more interesting areas of the ship. Shower? Well, people need to bathe while they're on the Hindenburg. Bathrooms? Makes sense. Stairwell, we're not going to go down. That's closed off. Let's go back up. Let's check out a cabin. Here's the hallway to the passenger cabins. As you can see, double bunk. Sink on the left. But you'd expect kind of on a ship, really a steam liner, not necessarily an airship. Very similar. It's like a steam liner in the air. Another bunk. All right. Let's go down. B deck. More observation windows. Another bathroom. Airlock. This is going to go to the smoking room. There was an airlock. Believe it or not, they had a smoking room on the Hindenburg so the passengers could smoke cigarettes. Of course, surrounded by flammable hydrogen. And they had an airlock that would prevent, essentially induce positive pressure out of the, uh, into, the smoke, uh, into the smoking room, preventing any of that from escaping. So, here we are. Smoking lounge. And what else do you need while you're smoking? But, you know, a nice drink. So there's a bar associated with the smoking lounge. And we've got a cabin for that guy. Now we're on the keel corridor. You can see you can actually get into the actual airship itself from here. We're not going to go there yet. Here is the cruise mess. This is where the crew would take care of themselves, eat, get some relaxation. Which is next to the galley. We have a cook there making some food for the hungry passengers. Passengers, Let's go ahead and go up to the server pantry. This is where they would be eating. Uh, here's where the passengers would be enjoying their meals while crossing the Atlantic up in the sky. Now, the graphics aren't great here, but these are like German painting murals that you can see clearer pictures of on the internet. Let's go ahead and go down into the airship itself and get to an engine compartment. Oh, yeah, the new compartments. They originally, this, uh, the ship would hold a smaller amount of, of uh, passengers, and they expanded that in 1937 to, to be able to take more passengers and, of course, make the trips cheaper as well. So they added cabins. There's a woman checking herself out in the mirror. Let's go ahead and teleport to somewhere that I'm a little confused about. Let's go ahead and go to an engine car, or actually the keel corridor. So this connects the ship from one end of the ship to the other. This is where we were coming from. Ballast tanks. 
this is the actual passenger area right here. This is what I was trying to find. Let's go back to one of the engine compartments. People and men would actually walk across this thing while it was in the sky to be able to do maintenance on the ship. Let's go to one of the engine cars. Kind of terrifying. Here we are at the side wall of the Hindenburg. We're going to go to one of the engine rooms. Check that out. Oh, there he is working on the engine. There's one of the propellers pushing us along. Telegraph, radiator, observation window for the men that are on the engine car. There are a number of these. You can see there's another engine car back that way. Let's go ahead and go to that one. Cargo here, there's none here, but this is where the passenger's cargo would be. Now we're getting to the rear of the ship. And the auxiliary control station, which is down there. Let's go ahead and go down that ladder. And you can see these are the guys in the rear that are controlling another part of the ship. This is not the main control center. The main control center is near the front. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and teleport to that. All right, here's the control center. This is the front of the ship. Very much like a uh, steam liner of the time. And we are back to the passenger section of the ship. Let's go all the way to the front. Not much here. Some ropes. Observation platform. Let's take a seat in the chair. And you could actually have a view from the Hindenburg doing just this. And here we are. Let's go to the axial corridor. This is a corridor that went through the center of the vessel. It was another maintenance path. Literally, men would be crawling through this infrastructure. All the ship is in the air to do maintenance, control the vessel, get from one portion to another. Way up in the sky. Surrounded by hydrogen. And guys, I hope you found that interesting. Um, this is just an example of what we can do with VR. We're now at it. We have visited the Hindenburg, walked around the Hindenburg, and experienced something that we could never experience in real life. Hopefully, we'll see more of this in the future. And uh, I just wanted to share that with you. It's, of course, much more impressive when you're in the helmet in full 3D. But just thought I'd give you a view.